past. Elizabeth Jake Feinler pioneered and managed first the ARPANET and then the Defense Data Network, Network Information Centers, under contract to the Department of Defense. Both of these early networks were the forerunners of today's internet. I found it interesting that in her induction speech into the Internet Hall of Fame, Feinler mentioned the team she worked with rather soon in her speech, but other inductees didn't mention anyone else until minutes into their speeches, if at all. So she acknowledged the great people that she worked with, and that meant a lot to the project. And it also shows the importance of teamwork when doing great things, like, for example, inventing the internet, for goodness sake. She actually started off as a chemist. She was the director of ARPANET in the 1970s, which led to the creation of the internet by networking different ARPA computer networks and offices around the US. It was funded by the Pentagon for military research. Present, chapter five. A string is a scalar data type composed of one value made up of a sequence of characters. A literal string, or string literal, is a string that is explicitly made by surrounding it with single or double quotes. Here are some examples. These are all strings. You can add strings together to make one big string, break strings apart, and make those pieces new string values held in their own variables. Break up each character in a string and manipulate each character uniquely so on and so forth. Strings are so important that they have over a hundred internal PHP functions dedicated just to strings. URLs, HTTP headers, regular expressions, and HTML or XHTML pages all consist of strings. Treat your strings well and they will do the same for you. Variable values, concatenated strings, ternary operator values, etc. can be stored in string variables. Like I said, there are many, many string functions out there that is best to be studied separately. Each character in a string occupies its own index or key. It can be accessed by calling its variable name with its key enclosed in square brackets. This is the same as calling an array element. Here's an example. The output will replace k, the lowercase k, with uppercase k. Note. Aim for using double quotes for strings since often you will be using variables within the string to note the variable's value. With double quotes, the variable name will be parsed and output its value. For more complicated variable uses within strings, you can surround the variable name itself with curly brackets. Here's an example of how this is used. Note the curly brackets here. You can also include special characters by escaping them with a slash. It's best to review these special escape sequences on your own because there are a few. If you demand that this string's contents be printed, use single quotes. There are a few characters that can be escaped within string literals using single quotes as well, like a single quote as an apostrophe. Review. The new here doc and now doc syntax, now doc being included in PHP 5.3, they are both used for handling whether single or double quotations are used for strings. Here doc delimiters output inside of their strings the values of variables, as well as escape sequences such as the new line and tab tags and such. They are the equivalent of using double quotes, and the delimiter is usually written in all caps like constants, which will be covered late. Now doc use outputs their strings as they are literally stated. For example, if you want to output to the browser an example of a block of script, use the now doc. They are the equivalent of using single quotes around your string. Its delimiter is surrounded by single quotes. Here's an example of both using the here doc syntax and the now doc syntax. The here doc and now doc delimiters recreate the use of double and single quotes for your strings, making things easier to read for more complicated strings. For example, in strings that contain numerous variables or that alternate between two different kinds of strings. I wanted to go over a few functions with you, strpose and strrpose. These two functions returns the index position of the first and last occurrences of the search text, respectively. 
as with str str, forgive me, I don't know how to say this function called properly, as with str pose and strr pose, uses the same two parameters. However, if a substring is found within the original string, the index value of the beginning or end for strr pose function of the substring is returned. If it is not found, it returns false. There is also a third parameter for str pose, where you can tell the search the index location to start the search itself. As with str pose, you can pass an optional third argument indicating the index position from which to start their search. If this index position is negative, strr pose starts that many characters from the end of the string rather than from the beginning. Unfortunately, when the substring you're searching for is located in the beginning of the original string, the result you seek may be messed up because that index is zero, and this may be mistaken for false by you or by the code you create. So make sure to explicitly test for a true false, if that makes sense. Here's an example of using str pose. By the way, mnemonic devices are very useful for remembering handy functions you know you'll be using a lot or just find your own tricks of the trade. And like I said in the past, make sure to share them. Chapter six, arrays. Arrays are compound data types that hold any number of values, including resources, objects, and other arrays. Indexes for these values can be numbers or strings. You can add arrays together to make one large array. You can break up the values of an array to make two or more unique arrays, etc. Think of an array as a cylindrical tube holding stuff. It's a way to alter large quantities of values at once. Array anatomy. Here's an example. This calls the array element you want to retrieve. There are two types of arrays as I mentioned before, indexed and associative. Indexed arrays have elements that are referenced by a numeric index, usually starting from zero. Associative arrays are referred to as a hash or a map. Multidimensional arrays have equal signs and greater than sign. That's the character duo operator that assigns a string or a key to a value within an array. The key is enclosed in quotation marks. One of the main functions used on arrays that I'm sure you'll be using over and over again yourself is the for each function. It's used to retrieve the keys and or values within an array to use at will. The format is for each array is value and do as many statements as you want there. Or for each array as key equals sign greater than sign value. And again, do as many statements as you would like there. The unset function deletes the variable that holds the values of the array temporarily in case if that variable is used later on in the code. The each function works well in returning the current value at the pointer. Creating multi-dimensional arrays is easy as long as you keep every array key and value in an orderly readable format. Basically, multi-dimensional arrays consist of array elements that are themselves arrays. To loop through them with a for each function, you insert a for each function within another for each function. The inner for each function works in the inner array and the outer on the outer. There are many more functions that work on arrays. Please review your reference of choice to see which ones are out there, which ones are right for you.